right, Jeremy Veldman with the Memphis Astronomical Society. Welcome to another episode of Telescope Tips. Here today with Brian Hancock. Good morning. It's uh, another beautiful early spring morning. We just finished an observing session. And Brian today is going to talk about some of the equipment that he uses on his Dobsonian for viewing conditions, actually to enhance your viewing conditions. So Brian, what do we got here? So we have got a bino viewer. So basically, you are taking the light beam that's going into your telescope and you're splitting it into two and you have to have two identical eyepieces for this and uh, then you are able to use both eyes uh, for observing. Now the question of whether or not you want to venture into binocular viewing, what you want to consider is it's not true binocular vision. So a true binocular has two barrels and it's delivering equal amounts of light to both eyes. With a bino viewer, you are splitting the light and sending it to two different eyepieces. So it's a little bit different. The views will be dimmer than if you were using a single eyepiece. So if the views are dimmer, why would you want to use a bino viewer? Well, one reason is for planetary observing because planets are so bright uh, and lunar as well. Planets are so bright and the moon is so bright that you're not really losing anything by splitting the light beam. As a matter of fact, you're gaining something because even though you're splitting the light beam, so you only have half amount of the light you would originally have going to each eye, you still have the 40% gain in visual acuity and you have the comfort of using both eyes. So, and there's another added benefit that if you'll, you'll notice that using both eyes, objects appear a little bit bigger. And uh, you can even try this at home, just cover up one eye and then open up an eye and uh, you'll see that things look a little bit bigger with two eyes. So with uh, binocular viewing, it's easier to see uh, planetary uh, details on Jupiter, on uh, Mars, um, and, uh, and on the moon. Yeah, in fact, we just looked at Saturn through this as well. Right. Early, uh, the sun's rising now, and uh, early pre-dawn hours, actually seeing actually improve when yes, we look at some of the planetary. We were able to see the rings and the Cassini division. Right. Even some of the banding structure on Saturn, so. Right. So that, and, and something else to consider with binocular viewers is you do want to think about what kind of scope that you're using, uh, because for some of the brighter deep sky objects, binocular viewing still works. Uh, the uh, most obvious example would be the Orion Nebula. The Orion Nebula looks great with binocular viewers. Um, so it depends on the, the brightness of the object that you're looking at. Uh, but one thing you do want to consider, if you're looking, if you're using a Schmidt cast grain, and so the focal ratio is maybe F10, when you use a binocular viewer, um, you're going to be working at about F11, F12. So that's going to make deep sky objects that much dimmer. With, uh, with a daub, if you're working at F5, then you're looking at about F6.5, F7, which is still bright enough to uh, look at deep sky objects. So I would say with a Schmidt cast grain, you're going to be very uh, you're going to be limited to lunar and planetary. Whereas with a daub, some of the brighter deep sky objects or with a refractor, uh, you're still going to be able to bind them with those. And again, with a daub, you have a larger light gathering capability, right. right? It's like a big light bucket. So even if you're splitting the light beam between two different eyepieces, you're not losing as much Correct. with a bigger light bucket, Dobsonian type, as opposed to some other type of telescopes. Right. So a binder view actually works really well with this type right. of scope. And um, for uh, recommendations for a bino viewer, I, I actually started out, this um, this uh, particular bino viewer is a little bit more expensive, but uh, I started out with a Williams Optics bino viewer. It's about, uh, I think it's about 230, 240, um, and it's really quite good. It's a good quality, it comes with two eyepieces, and uh, with a Barlow. So I would definitely recommend starting out with that, seeing how you like it, uh, because if you don't like it, um, they resell quite well on uh, cloudy nights or on Astromar. 
Uh, so that's something you can try to get your feet wet, the Williams Optics Vinyl Euro Package. And um, um, if you start out with that and you really like it, then you may want to move up to a higher model. Really, the, um, the quality of the Williams Optics Vinyl Viewer is really, really good. The uh, only difference is the, uh, the diameter is about 23 millimeters, I think. So depending on the field style of the eyepieces you're using, like for example, the 24 millimeter Panoptic um, is going to have a, um, a wider field stop than that. So you'll see some vignetting um, if you're using uh, the Williams Optic. Um, so basically, what do you get by moving up from a Williams Optics? You're going to have a larger diameter and um, a, a better field of view. But on axis, the image is almost identical. Fantastic. And again, those websites, if you're looking for accessories for your telescope, whether it's a vinyl viewer or anything else, you go to Cloudy Nights and right. Astromark. Astromark. Yes. All right. Fantastic. Good. Well, Brian, thank you very much. Sure. Another episode of Telescope Tips from the Memphis Astronomical Society. Again, guys, I want to remind you that the Memphis Astronomical Society meets once a month, first Friday at Christian Brothers University at Sessie Hall, room 155. Meetings start at 8 o'clock. And our website is memphisastro.org. And we're also on YouTube and Facebook. And we also conduct two dark sky observing sessions every month if the weather's clear. And you can meet Brian, myself, you can see this scope, other scopes that we have out there. So it's a great opportunity for you to learn about the universe with other amateur and professional astronomers within our community. So again, with Brian Hancock, I'm Jeremy Veldman, Memphis Astronomical Society. Another episode of Telescope Tips, and we look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Clear skies, folks.